Hi guys, uh, so this story starts here at this pile of orange I-beams. Um, we found these in a salvage yard about 100 miles away from where we live and uh, they were a really good buy and they were going to work in perfect for a garage project that we had. Uh, problem was we didn't have any way to haul uh, a pile of these I-beams. Uh, so we rented a trailer to pull them on and it was a poorly balanced trailer the load swayed around um, we had to hurry up and unload everything once we got it home then we had to haul the trailer back down the hundred mile trip again to get the get it back to where we rented it from and uh, it made a whole day of chasing things around um, and it kind of brought to light that uh, we were going to have a problem with moving things out to our property when we started building things and uh, ultimately moved out there So I had these axles that I bought at a swap meet years ago and always had intentions of doing something with them but uh, never quite got there yet. Uh, started off to build this trailer by um, removing the pads from the top of the axles because they were overslung uh, spring mounts and I wanted to mount them under the springs or the springs under mount so that uh, that required removing the plates put them down under the bottom of the axles. Uh, at that same salvage yard we'd also found these uh, five inch steel channels and uh, turned out that was a really good material for building a trailer out of. Um, so you can see here is the beginning of that project and uh, so we laid out the parts on here. Um, there's a different angle of it just to show kind of how things were just being set on there to uh, get an idea of how things would be put together, make sure uh, the concepts and fit up were right. A few different angles of what was going on. Uh, everything's just held together with uh, clamps and vice grips at this point. And finally things are tacked together a little bit in this picture. Um, kind of ignore that fender sitting there. That was uh, just to get kind of a reference to make sure things were still going in the, the direction I anticipated. Um, the main frame's been tacked together. Uh, I didn't mention these are 102 inch wide axles. So we ended up with an 80 inch wide bed. Um, and the 14 foot length of the bed and we started setting up the tongue parts on the trailer just to get an idea of where those were going to be um, and where we we're going to ultimately cut out for the, uh, the part that the hitch attached to. A little bit different angle of that. And here's a close-up um, of where the tongue attaches to the trailer frame. Uh, I used some short pieces of the channel uh, iron in this, trim some of the bulk of the material off of it, put a large hole in it there for a plug weld because I wanted all the strength on it I could get. Um, and then there's some half-inch plate that is attached to the end of the tongue um, that goes to those one-inch bolts and that is what the trailer pivots on so the tongue can actually swing up and down to, to allow the back end of the trailer to drop towards the ground. That will be more um, apparent here in a future picture. Here's kind of an inside view of the suspension tacked in place and uh, what the inside of that um, pivot mechanism looks like for the tongue. And you can also see in the background that pile of uh, orange I-beams that uh, we had hauled home. And a 
another view of the parts being mocked up on the frame. Okay, so after things were all um, figured out the, w the way that uh, the trailer was going to be ultimately put together, everything was tacked in place, um, then some 3 inch channel iron uh, was put in place as uh, floor cross members. And uh, this is all being put together with uh, our 7018 stick weld. So it's a pretty fluid weld and uh, I didn't want to really make out of position welds so um, we tilted the trailer up on its side. Um, so at this point it's getting to be a pretty heavy amount of steel and uh, so we chained it to a scaffolding and then used an engine hoist on the back and then just allowed the center of gravity to um, rotate the assembly up on its side. And then here's a side view of the frame turned up. This is the bottom. Uh, you can see a little bit more detail on the tongue. Um, the front coupler member has been put in place. There's a T section on the back of it, um, hooking it into the tongue of the trailer. And at this point, um, most all the major components of the frame are where they're going to be, and so the Anything that could be gotten at as a flat weld was done at this point. Then here's a picture of the uh, trailer in its tilt position. And you can see there is a um, trailer jack um, at the front of the frame. And just by cranking that like you were trying to raise the trailer, um, it raises the bed of the trailer. The tongue stays stationary where it's at. In this, in this case, it's just sitting on a jack stand. And uh, that allows the rear end of the trailer to drop down closer to the ground. Um, I haven't really come up with any provisions. I was thinking maybe ramps or something eventually to put on it, but I didn't want to have ramps with a uh, sharp kickover point because some of the things that I was thinking of putting on this trailer uh, wouldn't like that and uh, It didn't seem to work out in our situation um, We added stake pockets to the side of the trailer and that allow for putting sides on it or possibly using the trailer as a camper um, All kinds of things you can do with stake pockets, so it, it uh, extended the utility of the trailer and then I put rub bars over the top of the pockets, which is just some quarter by uh, inch and a half uh, bar. And that gives you a place to tie down tarps and things like that if you're tarping a load. So it's a, it's a kind of a handy thing to have on a trailer. And here's a view of the trailer towards the center of it. Um, there's a steel tube that runs between the center hangers for the equalizer, the uh, frame and the cross members up above it and then this is down below so it helps kind of create a box section through the middle of the trailer, um, gives some added strength to that center hanger where the equalizers attach. Uh, there's a pretty good amount of force on that when you're trying to go around corners with a tandem axle so um, enforcing that, reinforcing that area is a good thing to do. And then here's a view of the trailer um, with the uh, coupler put on it. it. Used a surge coupler so that this can be hooked onto pretty much any vehicle to be used. Um, it doesn't require the electric brake hookups or anything like that. Um, the fenders are being closed in at this point. There's some 20 gauge steel that was added inside of it. Um, I bought these fenders um, many years ago and put them in a shelf in the shed and they've sat there for quite a while. Um, I was trying to get around to building some kind of a project like this. So 
this is uh, finally getting getting put to use um, up at the front you can see that um, I hadn't come up with any kind of a release yet for my tilt function so right now there's just some u-bolts going through some angle irons welded to the front of the frame that holds that down so um, I'd have to unbolt it in order to be able to tilt it if I wanted to um, and so far we haven't really used the tilt function so it's it's just kind of a uh, extra item at this point and so unbolting it may not be that big of an ordeal for if we need to put it to use um, also at this point the fender mounts were put on there um, there's some square tubing with the ends of them angled um, there's holes in the ends of those tubes that will accept uh, small LED lights um, at this point uh, the trailer got cleaned up a coat of paint put on it um, it's moved along a lot further as far as getting components put in place um, couple of D-rings were added in the middle of the fenders at the top of the frame because there's no place to, no pockets to tie down to, so added a tie down there. And uh, so that extended the utility of that area. Uh, the wiring is going in place. The uh, hydraulic system has been put in for the surge brakes. Um, you can kind of see in the middle of the axle there where the, there's a block area that uh, ties the two brakes together on each side. Um, standard uh, four foot pieces of brake line were used and just bent up to allow the um, hydraulics to be attached without having to make you know custom brake lines or anything like that so just putting the right kinds of bends and loops in them allowed that to be done without uh, having to cut special lines um, you can also see that there's flooring off to the side um, that's getting ready to we put some uh, coating on it to protect it a bit before we put it on the trailer um, here's another view of the trailer You can see some of the some of the other angles of the wiring and uh, hydraulics. Uh, a small, what I call headache rack, was added to the front of the trailer. Um, that's to give you something to attach loads to in the forward position. Um, it prevents things from sliding off over the front of the trailer. Um, gives a place to attach the drive mechanism for the. Um, jack in the middle of the trailer so it has a lot of different functions a little closer view of the center of the trailer and here's a side view of the tandem area um, you can see a bulkhead block that I found um, it's a brass piece it's in the middle of the frame right between the tires above the center hanger and uh, that passes through the frame and then uh, has a nut on it to hold it in place and then uh, that allows uh, your hoses from your brake calipers to go up to that in a kind of a clean fashion you don't have to loop up on over the frame or under the frame or anything like that where there's moving spring parts and such uh, keeps it all on the outside where it's away from things and then it just has a, a brake type uh, inside fitting area for the to screw your brake hoses into so it, it ended up making a pretty clean um, way of doing the brake system for hydraulic hookups here's the front corner you can see the headache uh, rack a little bit better and that was just uh, made up of a couple of pieces of channel that were cut and um, welded together on the ends and that bolts on there so that uh, it can be removed if it has to uh, all the the landing leg in the middle there the trailer jack that's that's all uh, bolted to the front of the trailer so it's something should happen to that since it's a mechanical device it can be removed and uh, 
repaired, worked on, whatever is necessary, replaced. And you can also see the U-bolt that holds the tongue up to the frame. Um, all the wiring runs through channels on each, or runs through the channel iron on each side of the tongue and it's armored inside of some uh, three-quarter inch EMT. Underside the trailers tend to get pretty well sandblasted uh, with dirt and rocks off the road so protecting the lines up in that area is always a good idea. Um, everything else is kind of tucked up higher on the trailer or positioned back in behind um, one of the channels to keep it safe. And I want to do something a little different here. Like I said earlier, the lights, if they're positioned at a 45 degree angle, serve both as lights on the front of the trailer or on the side of the trailer or on the rear because um, you can see them at two different angles um, straight on. So you can see them straight from the front, you can see them straight from the side. So it allows you just to just use uh, one light for that position instead of two. Uh, I cut a notch out on the corner of the frame and uh, welded a piece of bent metal inside of it. Uh, it's all quarter inch thick so it's pretty heavy It's because I wanted to maintain the strength in the quarter, corner of the frame. And then it's all welded inside and outside. Uh, and then just drilled that three quarter inch hole in the middle for that light. And uh, so it kind of protects the, the light. It's recessed in there a little bit and it's clearly visible from all different angles. And here's a front view of the trailer. You can see we've got the safety chains on it, the wiring harnesses there, uh, the surge coupler. Gets a better view of what's going on with the um, uh, jack drive shafts. Uh, you can lift that handle out of the cradle on the front there and it slides onto the drive shaft. It holds it in place and then you crank the landing gear as you need for coupling and uncoupling the trailer. And just there's another angle of it just before the floor is ready to be put on. Then I added uh, lighting to the rear of the trailer. Uh, this is, everything on the trailer is LED lighting so it's very low amp draw. Um, the uh, there's three lights in the middle of the trailer that is required by the DOT to show that this is a 102 inch wide trailer. Um, you're supposed to mount them up at the highest point as you can on a trailer. So on semis, you know, like a van, you'll see them way up at the very top of them high. Um, when it's a low trailer like this, this is the highest point, so that's where they ended up. Um, there's required spacing to them, so kind of hit the middle road on, on their specification for that. Um, we added compiscuity tape to the trailer, which is the alternating red and white tape that's reflective. And uh, there's also corner reflectors that are required. Um, so those are just uh, a tape type product. Um, it's a kind of a rectangle shape that you can just uh, stick on there. And uh, I believe the, the lights have reflectors in them so it may not have been required, but they want reflectors at the extent of the, uh, the farthest outside corners of the trailer. So I just went ahead and put those on there to make sure that nobody had any complaints about the legality of the trailer. And then here's a flash picture as it started to get darker outside. Um, that shows you how effective those reflectors are in letting people know that there's a trailer in front of them and this is without any trailer lights on at all this is just uh, reflective materials and then here's another picture from the side view of it um, you can see how the tape lights up in the dark there's uh, the stick on red reflectors at the back um, they're also at the front of the fenders all the way at the front of the trailer, 
and I also put a piece up by the coupler there of white reflective tape just so if the trailer is sitting around out in the dark in a parking lot um, somebody's less likely to run into it because it'll show up uh, if any light hits it so the trailers pretty well lit up just by the reflective materials itself and then the small lights on it um, they're pretty effective and so it everything lights up pretty well at night and then this is a picture of the trailer as it's uh, been put to use already it's covered with mud at this point um, obviously the seasons changed a little bit since the build um, but it's successfully been out on some long hauls. Um, we've been using it to bring materials back for our different projects that we're working on. Um, one of the things that we went back to the salvage yard for and picked up uh, siding for our garage. Um, it was low cost material, so you can save quite a bit uh, taking your own trailer and uh, finding things and picking it up. And finally, here is a load that we took out to our property. This is a, about a 500 mile trip um, one way, so we have got uh, those orange I-beams have been prefabricated into a garage and we loaded them at home and put them on this trailer and hauled it out to the property. And they're all ready to be unloaded and uh, set up in our garage build, um, which is going to be one of our next uh, videos that we do. Um, unfortunately, this wasn't a video because we weren't doing any video recording at this point. We're just taking pictures of things that we're doing, and then we realized that uh, maybe some of the videos were going to be fairly important, so um, we went back and started doing that kind of stuff. So, thank you for watching.